What's going on? It's your man Ribs. So today we're going to talk about using Lightroom to convert your negative scans without using Negative Lab Pro at all. So a lot of people are always asking me, is Negative Lab Pro worth it? And I think mostly they ask because of the cost. It's obviously an upfront cost that you have to pay and then you can use the software as much as you want. And some people would rather not. So ultimately, um, the quick answer to that question is yes, I think it is worth it. But if you don't want to pay for that or you really want to learn how to convert scans on your own using software, then this is one way you can do it. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom. We're going to look at two examples, one landscape and one portrait. And then I'm going to show you how I convert each one using Lightroom only. Let's go. All right, so we're going to start with our first image here. The first thing you actually want to do is similar to what you would do in Negative Live Pro or before using Negative Live Pro, which is to define your white balance. So. I take the color picker here and I click on the border of the film and that gives you a neutral color balance. Next important step is obviously to invert the tone curve. That's going to be the most drastic of all the changes and that's actually going to reveal a positive image. So you do that by dragging the left side of the curve up and the right side of the curve down. The next thing you want to do before proceeding anywhere is to actually play with the histogram a bit here. So you want to drag the far side of the curve to basically where your darkest dark point is. Um, and I know I have a little bit of data right here, but it's not a lot. So I'm actually just gonna drag past it, putting it right here at the beginning of this kind of peak right here. And then on the left side where your highlights are, um, there isn't much. Um, it's already all the way at the edge and that's because I have some very bright highlights in here. So I'm using the full spectrum of, of the whitest white to the blackest black. Um, and as you see, if I move it around here, you'll see that it kind of brightens up a lot of that. So that's that. Next thing I want to do is actually convert this into a positive image. And therefore, I'm going to uh, export this as a TIFF file. And then once I do that, then I can mess with everything uh, the normal way, quote unquote. And here we are. We're back in Lightroom now. So I'm going to go back to the develop panel and go back to the tone curve. Um, and now, basically, everything should be easy to work with the way you would work with the positive image. So the key three things you need to do here are mess with the R, G, and B channels via the tone curve in order to get the appropriate color on your image. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and start with the blue since that's the one that's most obvious um, in terms of the color cast right now. And you see here on the tone curve, you've got blue over here and you've got uh, yellow down here. So we want to move away from the blue for both the shadows and the highlights here, given that the image has a very blue cast. So to do that, we're going to first go on the left side here, which represent the, sh the highlights. And we're going to pull that over. And as you see, it's starting to take away a lot of that blue. So keep moving it until the blue is gone sufficiently for your taste. Um, you know, let's leave it somewhere here for now. And this isn't exact because you're going to have to edit this again after you do the first three individual channels. Then you can go back to this blue or to any of the channels and fine tune. So we're going to go ahead and potentially add a bit of yellow here because we still have a lot of blue up here. So you see if I move it to the left towards the blue, it gets more blue. If I move it down, then it'll get more yellow. So you know what? Let's leave that as is right there. Now I want to proceed to the green channel. And I think there's way too much green here in kind of the mid-tones. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start again from the shadows and see how much of an effect that has. And I don't want to go too hard because you'll see the... the the opposite here is magenta, and that'll start to creep into the image. So I actually don't think this needs too much of a tweaking in terms of removing that much green. So I'm just gonna take hints away until it kind of cleans up a bit. And you see there, I think the green, it gets too green if I move that way. So let me actually move downwards and see what happens. See, if I start moving down, everything's starting to get more magenta, magenta, and there I think it's too much. So we're gonna leave that kind of right there. And now we're going to go to the red channel. Here you've got red and cyan. Those are the two kind of opposite colors. So in this particular image, is kind of interesting. I don't see an obvious red cast or an obvious cyan cast. So um, I think what I'm going to do is just remove a hint of the, si of the red because uh, I do see a tiny, tiny hint of it. And then we can start tweaking. So let's see. I think if we go from the shadows here, which I think is where it's most pronounced, if we just move a little bit back towards cyan, I think that'll clean things up a bit. You see, I don't want to go too far because instantly it starts to make a massive difference. So it's just a hint. Uh, you can actually change the output number here. So that's at six right there. Um, and that looks okay to me. I'll put it at four. Actually, no, I think five is probably better. 
So let me just show you what we started with and what we are now. So if we go to before, it's this crazy blue, like wild thing going on. And here we've got an image that actually looks legit. It's looking very flat, it's like in contrast, but I think we're in the right place. So what you wanna do now is actually go back to the blue and then now start to mess with the curve here. So as you see, what we did initially was to actually just clip. So clipping means you just basically remove it from the very kind of farthest edge of the spectrum. Um, and that's what we did on both sides. Now I think we can actually start to mess around with this as you would with the tone curve in, in terms of creating different points and just pulling and pushing them. So this is where it gets very kind of, you know, there's no rules here. Now it's the personal taste. So I think there's too much blue in my mid-tones here. So what I'm gonna do is actually put a point in the middle here, um, and then I'm just gonna drag it towards the yellow a little bit. And you see that makes a very fast difference. Okay. So it's looking a little bit better there, let's see. I go back and then drag again. I kind of like what that change did. It wasn't too much, but there it is. And then the green, this is looking very neon green to me, which I want to get away from. So the meat of this image is kind of right here. So I'm going to pull, uh, I'm going to set up a new point here and then pull from here just a little bit towards the magenta and see if we can calm that green down just a little bit. And I'm going to move around. Instead of pulling from the very top, I'm going to pull from closer, or, you know, you can kind of move around here, basically. You don't have to set that point in one specific place and leave it. You can set that point and kind of move it around and also drag it to both directions and see where the impact looks best to you. So I kind of like that right there, per se. And I'm actually going to move the end of the curve and see what happens if I move it just slightly away from where it is now. Right now it's all the way at the end. Actually, it was not at the end. It was somewhere shy of the end. I'm gonna pull it a bit more and see if I can calm those green down a bit. Actually gets very contrasty because I set that point. So as you can see here, again, it starts to tinker, but ultimately the three things that we've done already in terms of mess with the RGB layers, that's gonna make that's gonna make the bulk of your correction. And you can see we already have a positive image. Now the question is, do you like the actual colors themselves? You know, can you mess around with that? And that's where you can actually use all of the tools in Lightroom at your disposal. So I think I like that where it is. Um, this image is looking very flat to me and a little bit too dark. So now I'm gonna go up to the exposure and I'm actually gonna add, let's say a, a third of a stop or about 0.3. So here you've got a brighter exposure in my opinion. And then let's go back to the kind of overall curve here, which we haven't done anything on. I'm gonna go ahead and set a middle point here. And then that way I can kind of add some contrast by moving the highlights up a bit and pulling the shadows down just a hint. And now you see the image is looking very blue again, which means you can go back to the blue channel and mess with this some more there. So I'm actually gonna draw a new point and pull towards the yellow here. See if that's doing anything. And that's not really doing much. It's still, it's actually increasing the blue in the highlights here, which I don't want. As you can see, this has gone up because I pulled this down. So we're gonna undo that. And we're actually just gonna take this middle point and pull everything towards the yellow. And that seems to be making a bigger difference. Um, so I like where we are there. Ultimately, those greens are just a bit too aggressive for my taste. And this is Ektar, which kind of makes sense because Ektar really brings the saturation in. I do like Ektar a lot actually, but I guess it depends on the image. This is an overcast day, and I think this is where Ektar really kind of doesn't do its best job. Ektar does great when there's blue sky and when there's some good sunlight coming in. With overcast, I think some of the colors get too aggressive, whereas others go kind of mute. Um, last thing I want to do is actually bring the exposure up just a bit more. Let's put it at a full half a stop here. And I kind of like where that is. So now what we're going to do is challenge this against Negative Laugh Pro. As you know, I have the original scan here, so let me actually pull it up. And so this is the one you're looking at right here is mine. Let's actually convert one using Negative Laugh Pro and see what it does. So we'll go ahead and do that. That white balance, which you always have to do to start. Then we'll go ahead and crop this. We'll do Control N, bring up Negative Laugh Pro, switch this to Frontier, which is the one I always usually use. Haven't had any issues with that and convert negative and let it do its thing. I'm pretty excited to see how I compare here. Um, you know, curious if I did a good job or not. Okay, 
Okay, looking very different so far, at least from what I remember. So let's just reset the crop here so it's fair comparison. And now let's look at the two side by side. Let's close that. And will that make a difference? Not really. All right, so these are the two. And I think I know which one I like more so far. Um, first and foremost, um, I obviously the one on the right is Negative Lab Pro and I do like that one a lot more. There's a couple reasons why. First reason is contrast. As you see here in the mounds itself, you've got a lot of detail coming out of the green. Um, there's some different colors in there in fact, like little light shades of beige and like brown. That's important because A, that's texture that's in those actual hills. And then there's also contrast that's in there because of that color. And it's very evident right here on the left. Um, you can see there's a lot of texture here coming out from some plain rock sides of the hills. Whereas in this one here, that's very, very muted, very low contrast. And then also the color's a bit off. Um, the other thing is, I think the negative lab Pro does a lot better with the magenta. And that bringing in the magenta colors in here really brings a lot of detail into this image. Uh, I think the negative lab Pro one is a little bit too contrasty and that's something you could probably edit yourself very easily. So I don't really consider that a big deal, but as you can tell, there's a real difference there. So, you know, is Negative Lab Pro something you could live without? Maybe, if you get really good at this process and of seeing what it is that you like. But I think I, I prefer having software give me a really good kind of base and then allowing me to tweak from there. Because um, that ensures that some things like contrast and the exposure and, and your colors are more in a kind of stable place in the middle that then you can tweak another direction. When you're doing it from scratch, as I did on the left here, um, these are all things you need to kind of account for from the very beginning and think about. And if you don't have something to compare it to, you might think you have a good image, but it might be missing those things that you probably want. So that's the comparison right there. We're going to do one more here. We're going to do a portrait. So let me exit out of this compare mode. Go ahead and bring up my panels again. And this time we're going to do a portrait like I said. Real quick interruption, go ahead and check out my podcast. Link is down below in the bio. I've got a bunch of new episodes coming out in the next couple weeks, so make sure to go ahead and check it out. Okay, so that looks good too. Let's go ahead and reset the crop and then we can compare. So these are the two images here. Let's remove these panels so we have more space. And you can see a big difference between the two again. Um, the Negative Lab Pro one doesn't have any kind of cast at all. And here the cast is very obvious on this image on the left. Negative Lab Pro on the right, so very clean look up here with the colors. Overall, there's nothing bad to say about this image. I think it gives me exactly what I, what I wanted to. So these are the two comparisons. I think interestingly enough, you can see that here in my kind of white part of the image, which is, that's just from the holder of the, of the film when I was scanning. You can see a very clear difference in the color. Here it's pure white, as it should be, because it was black in, in the normal scan. Um, and then here it's not white, which is what it should be. So I think that's indicative of the cast as well. How you remove that, not entirely sure, but as you can see, you're getting in the direction of what looks like a good image. Um, you definitely need to practice this because it's not gonna be easy to remove all these casts and get the colors exactly where you want them to be. So ultimately, when you get rid of Negative Lab Pro, I don't think you should, especially because that's fast. Not only is it better, but it's also faster. Um, if you have to individually convert every single image, that would take you forever. So I don't recommend that. But I think it's good for people to know how this stuff works. And for those of you who don't have Negative Lab Pro, if you are looking to do this on yourself, give this a try because um, if you get good at this, you could probably get really good results, especially if you shoot bigger formats, uh, like medium format and large format, because then you, know, you can invest the time in it since there's fewer photos. As opposed to if you're shooting 35 millimeter, you've got 36 photos to go and doing this for each one, that's probably gonna be very daunting. So anyways, that's how we do it. I hope this was entertaining and I hope you learned something here. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'm out.